I'd like to welcome everybody to the Coochie County Board of Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, September 14, 2021. Uh, would you please help me open with the pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. Uh, first order of business is to approve the proposed agenda with the additions and or deletions. We do have a couple of additions. Uh, we'll note uh, addition number one as being A6 for the resolution of the grant agreement. And number two will be five under human resource. Move with the additions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Bablick. All second. Thank you, Commissioner Sloody. Any comments or questions <coughs> on the additions? Uh, hearing now, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next up is to approve the minutes from the August 24, 2021 regular meeting. That motion. Thank you, Commissioner Ray. I will second. Thank you, Commissioner Stoy. Any discussion on the minutes? Any no discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. The next up we have a COVID update. And Kathy, hello. Good morning. Good morning. It's been a while since we've talked about <clears throat> this and I wish that we didn't have to talk about it at all, but here we are again. Uh, <clears throat> as of uh, last Thursday, there were 25,559 tests administered in Cochichin County with 1,061 positive and 1,003 no longer needing isolation. Since that time though, we've had a rise in cases. Um, in fact, we have had, today we were at, are at 1,090 um, cases with 19 deaths and we could possibly be adding about 10 cases today and a few tomorrow. Since the 1st of September, there have been 93 uh, confirmed cases just here in Cochichin County. So it's still around, it's still um, traveling with the new Delta variant, and we don't know how many of the people here um, have that. We don't have access to that information, but we know that it is spreading um, faster and amongst children more. And so there's going to be, with school starting and having had the bass tournament and several weddings, I guess we can expect that that number, our numbers are going to rise for a while. It's still recommended that people uh, wash their hands, wear masks when they're in public, and continue to do the same things that they've been asked to do for the last year, year and a half to mitigate the spread of the virus. Uh, Pfizer has full FDA approval now for 16 plus um, and it is well known that unvaccinated people are 29 times more likely to be hospitalized with COVID than those that have been vaccinated. Um, the vaccine shows a very high percentage of uh, not resulting in hospitalizations and deaths for people who get COVID but have been vaccinated. Uh, they do hope to have the vaccine ready for children under the age of 12 by the end of this year, but um, that is not, it's not ready yet. There have been some questions about the boosters. Um, they're not really caught calling that, a lot of people are calling them boosters, but what they really are is they are additional vaccinations for people who are immune compromised that maybe, or people that maybe did not have a good um, 
antibody response to their other vaccines. They were hoping to have some of that ready to be <clears throat> distributed by the by September 20th, but Pfizer is the only one now that is indicating that they may be able to meet that date. Um, Moderna, Moderna has said that they will not be ready to meet uh, that date of September 20th. So I think the main thing um, for people to understand is that it's not going away. If you're not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. There are vaccines available at both of the clinics. Um, they are continuing to test people for COVID. However, they are becoming overwhelmed with people showing up at the hospital. Um, to get tested, it's really important that people call one of the clinics and make an appointment uh, to get their tests. The only, <clears throat> those are not rapid tests. Those results are usually available within about 48 hours. The only place that is doing the rapid test is the, um, <clears throat> the COVID quick results, which is in the old top 10 building in front of Super One, they are doing doing the quick test where you get the results within about 15 minutes. However, there is a charge for that and it is cash up front when you go to do that. I have noticed just from driving by there that they appear to be very busy. They, um, of course, are have the majority of the testing for those that are trying to get across the border. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Me first. <laughs> Kathy, that rapid test they're having at top 10, being that it's not a, uh, a usual uh, healthcare type setting, I'm, uh, how do they, how do they, the, how does the medical field uh, determine that there are, that these are reputable people that are doing it? Because I have no idea who's doing it. Well, it's not, um, it's not really difficult to administer the test and they aren't doing anything beyond administering them and um, giving the people their results. They're not providing any healthcare or anything like that. So um, there has, I have not heard anything about them not being reputable or not uh, dependable in any way. Good. Also, I have one more, one more question. Um, I have, and this is just a general concern. I went and had a test done. I won't say which of the facilities, but when I went in, I went and had the test because I was somewhat exposed, and uh, they made me feel like uh, the person that did it made me feel like I was wasting their time getting a test. Is any other people? said uh, had that concern at all that there's no need to have a test and I know there's even in the medical field there's people that think this is some kind of uh, hoodoo thing or but is there any other concerns in the medical field of people not not being concerned that you know of? Yeah. Well I do I do know that there are some healthcare people that personally do not feel um, you know, this, they don't necessarily feel that people should be tested or vaccinated for that matter. So it could have been an individual's thoughts, but there is a, um, on the <clears throat> Stay Safe Minnesota, Minnesota Department of Health um, website, there is a COVID testing recommenda recommendations and, um, it really, it lays out when you should be tested for COVID um, if you're not vaccinated and when you should be tested if you are vaccinated. So that might be helpful to look at. Uh, it sounds to me, I mean, if you were exposed to someone, yes, you should get tested. Um, All right, thank you. So I, it, it just, I, I would hope that it was just that person I 
it's too bad that they may have um, brought their own biases into their work, but people are people. Yeah. Kathy, um, the, uh, the information that you get from the state, does any of that include um, like age, age groups of those that are being tested or those that, are, those that have tested positive and things like that? Well, there is, um, there is information on the, the Minnesota Department of Health website as to some of that demographic information as far as age, where people live, what kind of settings they live in, and those kinds of things. I don't have that right in front of me right now, but um, some of that information is available there in their weekly report. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Kathy? Well, thank you, Kathy, for the Kathy, information. Kathy, this is uh, Dave Reimer. Um, what about this test that you can buy from Walmart? I mean, you know, most of the people are going to, you know, we've had a lot of highway department employees go get tested, and it's like three or four days, it seems, before they get the results. And you've got Walmart advertising this rapid test. And it's relatively inexpensive. Do you know much about that? I don't know much about it, but what I would look for, um, <clears throat> I, and maybe it tells on the box or something what their percentages of uh, false positives or false negatives okay. with that test. I have read nowhere where it, it recommends that people do their testing that way. It's, I would I would guess it's similar to the over-the-counter drug testing kits that you could you can buy they're certainly not going to be re as reliable as a um, approved testing through a medical provider okay thank you Kathy this is Duane at KSDM radio from the Cushing County numbers do we know uh, how many crossover uh, we've had, Th those that have been vaccinated that have gotten the uh, COVID? There is, um, on the line list that I can view, there is, there is the option to print or to look at those that have been vaccinated but have received the, or have caught the virus. I don't have that in front of me right now, but there is that information out there. Okay. Anyone else? Well, we appreciate you looking into this, Kathy, and, and you know, like with the increased cases and stuff, it, it, you know, vaccination is still probably the, the best method for community health and safety, um, as well as the social distancing and, and so on. Uh, and we appreciate you uh, update. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Yep. All right. Next up is a financial business. Mr. Chair, I will move on the uh, to approve the summarized payment listing uh, to approve the. Uh, August payroll and payroll ACH payments to approve the courthouse claims and to approve the highway claims, A, B, C, and D. Thank you, Commissioner Heaney. I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Reed. Any comments on the claims? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next up is to accept donation. Mr. Chair, I will move to accept the donation uh, for the, uh, the veteran service uh, van. Thank you, 
Twitch rating. One second. That was from Rainy Lake Medical, wasn't it? Um, Essential Health. Essential. Okay, yep. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. We certainly, uh, certainly thank their, their donation and, and uh, the continued support. Yes, Commissioner Bellick. I'm just wondering if we should have a note from the chairman, you know, thanking them. Certainly. It is much appreciated. Yeah, this, this is a big oh. deal. Thank you. That's your motion. You have to okay. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next item is to approve the 2022 taxing district levy requests. I'll move on that. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any discussion on the requests? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? And motion carries. The next item is to authorize transfer of administration contingency funds to complex. We had a discussion about this here, or I just don't recall exactly what this was. Yeah, so, Mr. Chair, if I may, so when I did the uh, first half budget uh, report, I noticed that uh, the complex budget and, and discussion with Dean that we had some unbudgeted costs that were incurred, and um, so rather than eliminate some planned projects in the complex budget, we do have some funds in contingency that I could move over to um, the complex department and um, it, would not be, it would not change the total budget amount at all, it's just a reallocation of those funds. And um, so I'm recommending that we make a budget adjustment, moving some funds from contingency into complex to cover some of those costs. Thank you. Accept the motion. I'll make that motion. That's fair. Thank you, Commissioner Marie. All set. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. Any comments on the transfer? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Then motion carries. Thank you. I'm sorry for uh, jumping there too. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, next up is the resource business. Uh, we've got the addition. Okay. Jenny, I just had to make um, a comment on that. So I'll give this to you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to make a position. I got it on. Okay. All right. Thank you. But we have the addition to the airport. Oh, First. Excuse, excuse me. Oh. Yep. Yeah, I apologize. I thought we were. Um, or wait. No, that's down. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. No, you're you're absolutely right. Excuse me. Okay. Originally, I was going to put it there. We're going right. You're right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So, as you can see here, um, we we have some turnover in our jail. So, first of all, I need to ratify the approval of employment separation for. Uh, full-time E911 Correction Officer Bo Herzig, and that's effective September 19th, because last day will be the 18th. Um, and also seeking to fill the vacant position within the assigned wage scale, which that was approved through, um, I had reached out to personnel committee to get this approved ahead of time, just so we could expedite the process. Thank you. Well moved. Second. Commissioner Murray. Any comments or concerns? I'm hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. 
Um, and the addition that I had to bring today was um, to approve the voluntary employment transfer of uh, full-time correction officer Sherry Owen. Um, she has accepted the full-time legal secretary position with our county attorney's office. Um, so Sherry's last day with the sheriff's office would be nine. Uh, I'm sorry, September 26th, and she'll start um, in the attorney's office as of 9:28. So we are also looking to um, get authorization to fill her vacant full-time position within the um, assigned wage scale. The first item is the bridge replacement. Oh. Well, we're, we're, we have, we'll do our addition first. Dave. What? We're going to do our addition first. Okay. Our addition. That's okay. Just know this thing. Next item is to adopt a resolution for the MSO agreement number uh, 1048416, a grant agreement for airport improvement excluding land acquisition for a state project 8336011. At the Falls International Anderson Field Airport, and this was uh, something that we had to have a, approved and signed here just recently. Is that correct? Um, no, I do not it? think that this one has been sent for signature yet because they usually won't do that until we get board approval. But it did come up pretty quickly. Great. I will accept a motion to adopt that resolution. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Hayden. Thank you, Commissioner Hayden. It'll be kind of a conflict for me, but I'm sure that you read every word of all of that. Did you see all of the documentation? Yeah, it's very complicated. Anything. Yeah, we, had, we, we, had, we had some discussion about the grants and stuff, and I know Dave's aware of the federal grant stuff is quite complicated. and. Talking with Paul and with Kyra, there, there really uh, is a lot of, a lot of uh, difficulty in, in stuff to get through all this stuff. So, certainly uh, appreciate their navigating all of this too. So. Any other comments or? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Now, the uh, highway business and bridge prioritization resolution. Yeah, commissioners, um, this is to get in line for uh, st state bridge replacement funding. And the last time the board passed a similar resolution was back in March of 2016. And at that time, seven structures were listed, and six of the structures have been replaced. This re resolution that's in before you today prioritizes five structures. All five are deficient and are at or near the status of being eligible for state funding. Recently, I went out and did a request for proposal for engineering services on these five bridges. And the following is a list of structures. Bridge R0126 on UT383 over Valley Creek. 97939 on County Road 61 over Dinner Creek. 36503 on County Road 145 over the Rat River. 36506 on County Road 101 over the Black River. And 36. 515 on County Road 82 over the west branch of the back the Black River. And basically the resolution as you have it before you, I wasn't going to read it, I, I sent it out, um, has these five structures listed. 
uh, the initial estimated cost and approximately how much we would think we could get from either the township state bridge funds or the local and state aid funds. We uh, haven't really thought about federal funds at this time. And it just sort of gives a priority on the years that we'd look for, look at this. The one bridge, the first one, uh, R0126, that one was also in the list that was in front of you uh, about six years ago. On the, We have yet to replace that. We might think about redecking, um, but I also sent out a priority list with uh, the type of structure it is, uh, the LPI, which is the local priority index, that's what they use to rate the bridges and you need an LPI of less than 60 to get funding and you can see two of the bridges are already there. Um, and there's a couple additional notes that you can read about where these structures are at. Uh, also, maybe we can think about abandoning some of these structures, at least one of them, because it is very expensive. But right now we're gonna go out and get the quotes for the engineering. And then I need to pass this resolution so we can submit it to the state aid. And uh, from there, we'll get on uh, bonding less for bridges. Also attaches a map showing you where these bridges are located in the county. Yes. Uh, that did not make it into the board packet, but it was done as a separate email, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, second. Thank you, Mr. Schiller. Any comments? I, I, just, I just have one. You see, you have a total project cost, and then we have, uh, let's say, for the 97, 939. Uh, local or state funds of four hundred thousand, and, and the local project cost of six hundred. The two hundred then would be either a possible federal type of grant, or, or and or we would have to probably that would be our commitment as as the county. Bonus. Yeah, we try. We could get federal funds for it. Um, they could pick up more of the cost. This was just a placeholder I put in for uh, funding. With the bonding bill that was done last year, a lot, almost all the bridges that were in the eligible got funded. And uh, thank you. Uh, any, any other comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And motion carries. The next resolution is one of the bridges that we replaced <laughs> that was on the list in 2016, I believe. Um, basically, this is a resolution on agreement to the state transportation fund for the local bridge repair program grant, grant turns and conditions for SP 036-598-028. Basically, we got funding for this bridge, uh, federal funding, and then the state came along later and kicked in some state funding. So th this is a resolution to accept the local bridge replacement program funding for the County Road 99 bridge over the Rat Road. The LBRP will be funding approximately $186,000, $600, $21.48 for this bridge replacement that has a total cost of $630,559.50. The federal bros funding will contribute $407,030, leaving the county's portion at $36,908.202. Now that's what happens with this funding. I mean, you get one and then maybe the state helps out. So this is basically the resolution to accept the terms that's in the grant agreement 
that, that I had just gotten completed. And this wasn't in your original packet. Uh, the resolution was. Um, and once this is done, this is the bridge that we will start construction the end of this month. And it will be a two year project, basically because of the late start. And then it's also a walleye stream, so we have to stay out of the stream. So th this works pretty good with getting us, uh, we can get everything done in the stream bed this fall. And then the next year we'll pour the deck. And this was the last bridge on the 2016 list? This was the last bridge on the 2016 list, is that correct? Yeah. Not much water in that river as by there. There's nothing. <laughs> oh, it smells like little puddles here and there. You can walk in there. Yeah. Amazing. There, there's not much. Thank you, Dave. One more other thing I'd like to mention is we have the public meeting tonight uh, at 4 o'clock from 4 to 6 on the Van Lynn or Count Cassad 24 overpass. Uh, it's from 4 to 6. Uh, it's in the third floor courthouse. Um, you're all white, welcome to attend. Um, hopefully we get some people and get some input. but. Uh, this will probably be the last meeting, the public meeting that we have before we start construction because we'd like to go out for bids on this uh, right after the first of the year. Uh, so, and then that's 46 this evening at the third floor apartment. Third floor, yeah. Okay. Thank you. If there is any other comments to accept the resolution, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All will work. See you this afternoon. Yep. At this, at this time, uh, it's time for public comment. Uh, is there any public comment uh, in person or, or uh, online? No public comment. Uh, we'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'll move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. I'll second. Second, Commissioner Choi. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of adjourn say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you.